Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today I got a real treat for you. We're going to play my wife and I, a two-player co-op game designed by Richard Wilkins. It's going to be published by Victory Point Games. It's going to be out on Kickstarter this Tuesday, July 18th, Renegade. Yeah. So this game, there are a couple solo plays already out. Of course, uh, Ricky has one. I'm, I s definitely suggest seeing that one. And Doug Herring also has one, and he does a totally different SMC and uses a different character as well. So I, I really recommend checking both of those out. We're going to play with the other two characters that weren't used and another SMC, just so you guys can see how each play it can be totally different from one another. Just like normal, if you want to hang out and see how you set it up, and I, I do suggest that because setup is part of the game, actually, uh, hang out here. Otherwise, if you just want to jump to the playthrough, check out the video below this, and let's get going. To begin your setup of the game, the first thing you want to do is pick out your SMP, super massive computer you want to go against. The uh, simulator, don't want to use that for a playthrough. That's the one that you'll want to play the first time you play this game, just to kind of help you understand how to play. Doug played Alpha Moby, so we'll take that one out. Uh, Ricky played the Viking. Yeah, definitely taking that one out. So we're gonna do the spider. We'll leave the mother to you guys when you have uh, when you went back the game. You can try the mother, uh, but we're gonna do the spider. Each SMC tells us how many countermeasures to set up for the game. The spider uses one bra uh, copper, one silver, and one gold. At the bottom of the card, each SMC will have requirements, special requirements that happen at any time during the game. You have to look at them and read them to understand. So for the spider, her specific requirements are remove the partition die. Spider places each spark on a server's partition that is its lowest number and weakest. And a guardian equals three sparks. Each end of turn step, delete all contaminants and installations in partitions where every adjacent partition has a spark. Each countermeasures phase, skip step C, move sparks. So what she's going to be trying to do, unlike the other two that you could see through Doug and Ricky's playthroughs, is she's going to try and surround your contaminants and your installations and delete them. And when we roll for sparks, normally you roll the partition die and the server die. We're going to get rid of this, um, oh, I said that the wrong way, server die and partition die. We're going to get rid of this partition die and just roll the server die. When we roll that, then we'll look to see which, which partition is the weakest, so the least amount of sparks, and which one is the lowest numbered, and we'll place the spark there. And you'll see how that works in the playthrough. You can also see here, this tells us in each of the specific countermeasures how many times we have to roll this server die. So in uh, copper, we'll have to roll it once for each turn. But when we go to silver, we're gonna have to roll it twice for each turn, and then in uh, gold, three times. <laughs> yeah, it gets hard, fast. Here we have our three sets of countermeasure cards, copper, silver, gold. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the gold ones, we'll just shuffle them up. Don't look, or I'm not looking. And we'll grab one of these, this one looks good. Then we'll do the same thing with silver. And there are seven of each of these. So seven um, copper, seven silver, and seven um, gold. So here's our three. We'll start with the uh, copper on top, then we'll move to silver, and then we'll move to gold. Our copper countermeasure is gonna be called a key code. Our goal is that we, for each Renegade's home server partition number one, must contain four different colored contaminants, yellow, red, blue, and green. This is gonna be hard for us because remember what I said about the spider. She's gonna, whenever she places sparks, she's gonna be placing sparks at the lowest and the weakest partition. Well, that's usually partition one. <laughs> so we're gonna be fighting a lot of sparks here, but this will be a good start for um, showing you how to play the game. Next, what you wanna do is you wanna set up your server. Monica and I will go taking turns, grabbing a random tile and placing it on the board one at a time and we'll create the server. So Monica, why don't you shuffle them up? Okay, you can see them right there. Of course she's, well, that's your first one, right there. <laughs> no, okay. Go ahead and grab one. Okay, so what's important is the numbers have to face us. So she has to have them facing this way, and then I'll grab the next one. Okay, and the other requirement is you have to have the partitions touching in at least two different places. So I couldn't put this partition right here because that would mean they're not touching in two locations. 
So I think I'm going to put it right here. Oh, red. So red is going to be where I'm going to start because I'm going to be the red player. Let's see. Yellow. Put oh, I was close. hoping it was going to be this Put one. Put us close to each other. Do you want, yeah. Let's see. Oh, that might actually work. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then maybe the last one here, mm, here. Maybe. No, it's not going to fit there. Oh, yeah, right. Um, oh, it's got to face that way. Maybe all the way up here for Oh, there you go. For Faith. Yeah, and they can still see that, too. I mean, I think it's better over here. Yeah, just because that way it's closer. And when we have our data nodes, we can yeah. set them up so we can get a direct line right into Faith. That Great, so this is now going to be our board that we're going to use to uh, fight the spider. Since we're showing you guys a new game, we're going to call a uh, mulligan, <laughs> and we're going to move Faith over here, I think. Uh, Monica decided she liked to look better over there, and I agree. So, yeah, there we go. That looks awesome. Doesn't that look sweet? And you guys, I didn't mention this before, but just so you know, these are all prototype components. It's a press release copy. It's not the final version, but wow, it still looks pretty cool. Um, but I think Ricky said these are actually going to be a little bit larger, which will be nice because you'll see that some of these partitions get kind of crowded. But all right, let's go to the next step. There are four different renegades that you can be in this game. Uh, Ricky and Doug used these two, so Monica and I are going to use the yellow player, um, Hetty, Hetty Magnetic. I kind of like that. And Ocean Noro. Monica's going to be Hetty. I'm going to be Ocean. Each character card is identical with the exception of your special ability and, of course, your story. So up here, it tells you all the different names for different things. So you've got your contaminants, which have different names, your installations, which are created through making contaminants, your commands, which are used to put out contaminants or even to create installations or use installations, and then the servers were those different colors that we put out, and they've got all these different names. So red, salvation, virtue, freedom, and so forth. Over here are all of your actions. I'm not gonna go through them because you'll see them in the playthrough, but this is awesome because this is really helpful to know, okay, what can I do again? <laughs> You've got that right on your character sheet. Now, for the special ability for Monica's character, Hetty, once per player turn, your avatar counts as a replicant when you perform a modify action at your partition. And it tells you where your access point is, virtue six, so yellow six. This ability is awesome and you'll see why. Because she can modify sparks and change them into contaminants. Instead of having to spend all this command to upload, she's not going to have to upload. She can actually convert a spark over to a, a contaminant. Sweet. Ocean Noro has the ability that your avatar adds plus two to any infection scores at your partition at all times. So even when it's not your turn, and let's say someone else is doing an infection action and you're sitting there, you can add plus two. Or when the sparks fight back, at least how I understand this, when the sparks fight back, normally you can't use commands to boost the score of your viruses, but Ocean does. So I, at least that's how I read it. And hopefully that's right. Ricky, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, also, he'll come in at Salvation 6, so the, the, red, um, the red server. In case you can't tell, this team is the Spark Destroyer team, <laughs> and you need that against Spider, because Spider is throwing out sparks all over the place, and that is one of the main ways you lose. Actually, that is the way that you can lose this game, is you run out of sparks or you run out of guardians. So fortunately, we're using two characters that can really take care of those sparks, hopefully. In the final version of the game, you're going to use these standees that are really sweet. They look awesome. However, my press kit, uh, unfortunately, the little uh, feet parts of these do not fit well on these, and they keep falling over. So I'm just going to use uh, pandemic little uh, <laughs> ponds, and yellow, and that's close enough to red. So just so you guys know, we'll be using these ponds just because it's a little easier. But in your copy, you'll use these standees, which will look a lot cooler. Each character has their own 15 card deck, and you can tell that it's your deck by this icon at the bottom. So you can see this is red for Ocean, and for Haiti, it's the yellow. There's 15 cards, and what's awesome about this game is you will only ever have 15 cards in your deck. Whenever you buy new cards, you'll be getting rid of old cards in your deck and putting in new ones. So I, I, I love it. It's like a deck optimization instead of a deck builder. At the beginning of the game, you want to put your pawn, we're using pawns, or your standee when you, when you have the final copy, on partition six of your specific server. Monica starts on server virtue, and I start on server salvation. 
Also, since we're now jacked in, or whatever the name is for going and computer hacking, <laughs> we also start with one contaminant of our color. So I'll start with one virus, and Monica will start with one replicant. You also want to set up your supply piles. So here we have all the sparks, and on the flip side, there's flares. Hopefully we won't see any of these, and actually against Spider, you're not going to see a ton of flares because Guardians aren't going to be that often. Since she's always placing sparks in the weakest spot, usually that means she's not creating Guardians. Instead, she's just putting out tons of sparks and trying to delete our contaminants. So you'll see lots of sparks. Um, also, we have our contaminants up here. Now, what's cool about these contaminants is each one is two-sided. So we've got data nodes and the uplinks are on the same side of the tokens here and viruses and replicants on the same side of these tokens. Why that's important is because all these supplies are limited. So if we use up all of these, we can't upload another um, uplink or a data node because this supply is, is totally gone. Also over here, we have our installations. Our installations are, uh, we've got a data node, a neural link, uh, a replicator, and a propagator. And once again, I'll show you what all of those do in the playthrough, but just know that you wanna set up these ready to go. Also, make sure to get your dice together. This is gonna be our infection die, and this die is gonna be used for rolling for the sparks when we do infections to see if we beat them. Normally, you also have a partition die, but since we're playing Spider, we don't need a partition die. So we're all set there. Let's look at the setup for spiders so that we can set up the board. So we need to place one spark on each partition on Faith and one spark on every odd number partition on each player's home server. Let's do that. Here's our setup for spider. So one on each partition of Faith. Then we have one on 135 of, what is it, Virtue, I believe. Yep, and then 13 and 5 on Salvation, since those are our two home servers. We also have a little bit of help for us here as well. Because we're not playing with five characters, even though you can't play with five characters, we have a little bit of, let's say, uh, additional information, because these are considered information, and we get to have a data node worth for each open um, uh, uh, partition six that we have here, and we actually then can take these and place them anywhere we want. So, for example, if I was playing a four-player game, we would only get one data node for Faith that we could use and put anywhere on the board. If you're playing a solo game, you would get four of them. But since we're playing a two-player, we get three. So now Monica and I can decide where we want to put these uh, and, and make them as useful as possible. What they allow us to do is be able to um, do, when we do move actions using information, any uh, partition that has a data node, we can move in, it, move in and out of that for free. And I really should not say in and out, it's really just in. So if I was here and I had one movement, that's free, but that's one movement. So Monica and I are gonna put data nodes in these three partitions. Here's the thing. At the end of a countermeasure phase, or at the end of our command phases, and we go to the countermeasure phases, any contaminants that are in the same location as sparks get automatically deleted. Unless it's a virus, then they, they do a virus or a a battle, so to speak. But these are our partition ones that we need to have the four different colors on from our goal for copper. So we might as well put the data nodes there. So we already have one of our four required contaminants. So that's what we're gonna do. We put this one here so maybe it makes it easier to get over to faith. The last thing we wanna set up is the hack shack. Think of this as the area that we are sitting right now, trying and hacking into a computer. We can buy additional things to help us along the way. So we get to draw four of these, and these four will be available to us, and they'll refresh at the end of each of our turns. There we go. I'm not gonna go through them in detail until we get to the playthrough, but know that there are some really good cards out here. Oh yes. And that is the setup for Renegade with two players. I've got my trusty Chip Theory dice tray here, so hopefully we'll get some good rolls, and let's have some fun with this playthrough. Thanks so much for watching.